So today I'm going to run through my electrical upgrade system. I'm going to show you what components I use, what battery I decided to go for, and the accessories I also got with the battery. Um, I'm going to go through all the components I use, ranging from my DC DC charger to my Lynx distributor to my servo to my 240 setup as well. Then I'll show you how I covered it all up with these nice sliding doors, a big switch on just to see if everything actually works and I'm going to show what additional items I choose such as the LED lighting inside and I decided to install some fans just in case in the summer it gets a little bit hot in my electrical cupboard. So I've gone back to Rain Automotive again to supply me with everything I need for my upgrade. Um, I've used them before, they're very helpful, they contain everything in-house and any knowledge they're just an email or phone call away. Go over and look on their website, they've got lots of information on there, they do each individual items as well or they can form a package for your each individual camper van build. They do custom wiring kits, all you do is just go on their site, fill out a form, um, tell them what vehicle you're using and they can design the whole system. One of the reasons why I'm using this company again, because they not only supply everything you need but they also supply the cabling they can make up the ends for you so it just comes as one kit so it's really easy to install i installed this in just one weekend they've even supplied my battery for me i've gone for the fogstar drift pro but there'll be more information later on in this video in a previous video you've seen me how i made my cupboard to house my new electrical system so I've just simply placed it in and I've had to make a box out of plywood just to replicate my battery because it hasn't arrived yet. So I just needed to make a box just to make sure it fits. So I brought it back in the garage because I'm going to try and assemble most of the electrical equipment um, in the cupboard before I actually pull it in the van. I'm not sure if this is going to be a good idea or not because it's going to be quite heavy but it just makes it easier to set up in the garage first. One of my first jobs before I get too carried away is to make sure I can actually fix the cupboard to the floor. So I'm using these um, pocket holes um, and then I'm going to cover them up with these little covers. So laying on the bench will make it easier just to lay out all of my electrical components first, just to see exactly how everything's going to be placed and if everything is actually going to fit. The biggest issue when setting out electrics is where I want my cupboard is across a wheel arch. So you are quite restricted to how you're going to place everything. Wayne Automotive have supplied me with all the cables. All the ends are terminated with all the finials on the end. They've got heat shrink, they're colour coded and they're also labelled. So it makes it real easy installed and it saves me buying loads of tools. That I'm only going to use once and probably never use them again. This is where the headache starts because you've got to lay out your each individual components to where you'd like them but um, you want obviously shortest cable runs as you can and to make it look neat as well so um, this takes a little bit of planning so this is where I'm going to have my consumer unit this is where I'm going to have my solar isolator um, that doesn't end up staying there I'm going to move it to a different position I think I've gone for the Lynx distributor just to make it look nice and tidy as well and keep all the cables and fuses in one area. I've gone for the Multi Plus, um, so 2,000, that's plenty for what I need. I think 3,000 would be an overkill for me, seeing as I've got just one induction hob and a few sockets. Um, I've gone for some isolators. Um, I've gone for this um, smart charger, the DC DC charger, the 30 amp one, because then I can use my original cable. This is just a fuse box I'm using and my servo to control everything. So this is the only area that's large enough to hold my Multi Plus. So this is where I'm going to start my electrical upgrade from and then work from there. So I decided putting everything, all the components in the cupboard in my garage is going to be quite heavy once I bring the unit out. So I've decided to bring my cupboard out to the van and then work on it from there. You can see on the back of my cupboard there, I've got a little cavity that will help me hide a multitude of my cables and to make the install job look a lot, lot neater. All the cables you can see hanging down are from my 240 supply and my solar cables running from the roof. 
So after a bit of a struggle, the unit is now in. You can see the cavity at the back here where I can run some of my cables through. There's a couple of notch outs I had to do to avoid the hinge area of the van and some securing points. So I've put the MultiPlus on first, then I've connected the links so I can run most of the cables behind my wheel arch cover. That just makes it look a little bit neater and tidier. And then I've got my isolator switch coming from the side of that as well. Then I fixed my DC to DC charger on and I've used a bit of Victron color trunking just to make again, make the job look a little bit more professional and neater. You are quite limited to where you can run the cables from the battery to the links because they are really, really thick and they're quite difficult to bend just to make it look neater. But um, I think I've managed it quite well in this instance. I think I'm going to get some red and black covers to put over those end terminals there just to stop any chance of arcing. Using the links is great because it contains all the fuses in one area and it also makes the job look a lot, lot neater and tidier. So after those three components, I decided to put my solar isolator and then my solar controller. So this is where I'm gonna put my 240 consumer unit. Um, then I can hide all the cables underneath in some boxing. So you can see it's starting to take shape now. Um, my next thing I've got to try and work out is the fuse box to see where that is going to go. So this is where I decided to put the fuse box because then I can drill through the back into this casing and hide all the cables behind the wheel arch. So I've got to find a position for my Serbo GX. Um, it's got to be in a position so I can run cables to the screen and they come with limited length, so I can't be too far away. So if I put it here, I can run all the cables along the top, so they're hidden as well. So I finally decided to place the fuse board here. This will hails all my 12 volt system, and I can hide all the cabling behind. A little bit more excited, I've decided to put a little switch there. This was gonna switch on my blue LEDs in the cupboard, just to highlight my blue Victron system. So now I've placed the top on, it looks more like an electrical cupboard. It is quite big, but I can use it for other things as well, especially down on the left side, I can put a bit of storage there, or I could make that into another little separate cupboard as well. So the battery's turned up. I've gone for the Fog Star Drift Pro. It comes with a separate box, which houses all the cables you need to connect it to the servo, um, terminals, and this one is, comes with a fuse. Um, with the Pro Series, it comes with an active balancer. So the active balancer, what you do is you plug it in every three to four months, and that rebalances all the cells in the battery to make sure they're evenly used. That will prolong the life of the battery. So I've gone for the Fogstar. Take a look on their website. They do lots of different size batteries. I've gone for the 460 Drift Pro. Um, 460 is way bigger than what I need, but for the price, it's um, really good value. They even do a 628 amp hour one, I believe, but that's a complete overkill for what I need. So I've just gone for the 460. So the battery I've chosen has come with some real good specification. Um, it's 460 amp hour. Um, it's got built-in heat pads, built-in Bluetooth, so you can look it on your phone, or you can use the Servo GX, and it's full Victron integration as well. I'm no expert, but if you look on their website, they will give you a full specification and the complete rundown for each battery. Okay, so back on the cupboard, um, I've decided to put a few sockets to the back here while I can, while there's no cables behind. Um, I've gone for my tank sensor, but I will connect that in the future to my Serbo GX. I've got just a 240 socket, some USB points, which I've just noticed are upside down, and a 12 volt socket as well. So whilst I remember, I will fix this to the floor using these pocket hole screws. And then I've got these little plastic covers. Um, they're in a grey, but not the same grey as what I've got, unfortunately. Um, but they will do the job and just make it a little bit neater. Mm -hmm. 
Now I've got the battery in, um, I've strapped it down just using one of these ratchet straps and these little brackets I got off of Amazon. Um, just makes it nice and secure because I um, don't want it bouncing around when I'm driving. This little isolator stands off the panel in a little bit because the lip on the top section so I need to make a little box or some something to pack that out a little bit. So this is the active balance that come with the battery as part of it. Um, I've installed it near the battery. It comes with a little terminal end that you plug into the battery um, every so often. I think they recommend about three months and that just rebalances all the cells. This is the fuse that Fogstar recommended and they've actually supplied it with the battery for me to put on. So I decided to move my Serbo GX purely because of all those cables sticking up the top and the ones coming at the bottom will be more of a hindrance and then I can add my tank and temperature um, inputs to the bottom and it just make it easier to hide all the cables in my trunking. With the servo it comes with these little terminals as well so you can add tank sensors, heat sensors. This is a little packing piece I had to make for my battery isolator just to bring it off the wall a bit because of the lip of the wheel um, cover housing brought the cable off the wall. Okay, so now everything's connected, I can switch on the battery. This has a separate switch. Um, turn on my isolator, hopefully nothing will go bang. Turn on the multi plus as well. switch on my solar isolator hopefully that light will come on yet so they've got power there and the servo is also showing some flashing lights that's showing bulk and the servo is fired up as well so that does seem to be working and it looks like those solars going in the battery So the servo is really good because it will show you all different sensors you've got, um, your solar going in, your battery levels, um, what the MultiPlus is doing. It's a very useful thing to have with your um, Victron electrical system. So you can see it doesn't look too bad. I would like it a little bit neater than that, but um, I don't think it looks too bad for what I've got there. And you can see the fuse board looks quite neat. Um, and I've got a few spares as well. I think the MultiPlus might need a little bit more um, air ventilation, so I'm going to put a little grill under here, I think. I have got lots of cables underneath there as well, so I've got to find the right grill to use, um, because it might show everything, but I'll have a look at that. This is the grill I might put underneath there, so I shall see if that fits and put that on at some point. I've left everything running for a while just to see if it does trip out or I've done anything wrong by overheating cables but it seems to be looking good so far. I'll be showing this in the future video of the cupboards I've made um, in the front section of the van but this is just the uh, little panel I've made to house the servo and my 12 volt um, switching and um, USB sockets etc. It does take up a section of my little cupboard up there, but um, there wasn't really anywhere else I could place it. And I've got to be um, careful of the like, cable sizes. I didn't want it too long, the cables, but um, I think this looks pretty good once I've done it. So I'm gonna make some doors for my electrical cupboard. Um, I've decided to make some sliding doors just to add a bit of protection. I did want to make the doors from this lightweight grey ply again, but this is all I've got left over from those six sheets I bought. So I'm just using 12mm ply, then I'm going to cover them. Um, I've just housed out um, just some openings so I can put some like grills on the back there, just to add a bit of ventilation and also to make them lighter as well. I'm going to put grills on all three of them, so it's just a case of um, cutting them out all the same size and then I shall cover the plywood. So I found these grills in Ikea, funny enough. Um, they are, I think they're just like pegboards or for like notice boards, but they make really good grills. They are waterproof as well. They're nice and black to match the theme of my van. Because I'm using sliding doors, I might have to offset them slightly just to make them look um, 
fairly level once the doors are like overhanging each other but um, these are the grills itself you can see they're pretty good they're they're quite stiff as well and rigid um, I was going to use metal grills but I was just walking around like here and I see these and I thought they would um, make good ventilation grills I've got loads of this four-way stretch carpet so I thought I will cover those in them for now and see how they look but I might change them over at some point for something else They've actually come out better than I thought, so I would do the other two and then install them in the van and see how they look. Now I've got the grills on the back, they don't look too bad at all, do they? Um, and those little ventilation points should let in or disperse a lot of heat inside the cupboard. I've decided to make sliding doors rather than outward opening doors because if I forget everything in the back, like when I go away camping or something, it's easier to slide the doors than to take everything out so I can open the doors just in case a fuse blows or there's some kind of other incident there. So using the 12 mm ply on the carpet uh, makes the overall thickness of about 17, 18 millimeters and that's perfect for this track to slide in that. So it just gives a little bit of resistance so they're not sliding around on their own. But I might put some separate locks on them just to secure them as well. But you can see they slide nicely. So these grills should provide just enough ventilation to keep the electrics cool. That's even if they do get hot and it lets the blue light through. Having three sliding doors makes each area of electric cupboard accessible and the one on the left hand side I might even turn into a cupboard because there is some free space that side. I'm still not sure whether to have the single panel to the front or the single panel to the back. Um, I suppose I can work out which looks better later on. These do lift out so I can change them at a later date. So this is what the little switch is for, just to illuminate this blue light I've got inside the cupboard. It don't have to be blue, it could be red, white, whatever you want, but I thought the blue would match the Victron blue um, in my electrical setup. Also it matches all the other blue LED lights I've got and the new Serbo um, colours as well. At some point in the build I'm going to install this um, socket here. This carries two USBs and the reason for those is I'm going to put some um, ventilation fans in. So it'd be easy just to plug into those or I could connect the fans direct to the servo. So when it hitches a the temperature these fans will come on. So these are the fans I'm going to use. Um, I got them from Amazon. They do come with pre-assembled USB um, connections on the ends. You can connect them up to I think two or three and they come with a temperature gauge as well. So if I don't connect to my servo this can be a standalone system. So this is where the fan will come out, just to the right hand side of that light switch and just underneath. Um, I've got limited space inside because I've got my consumer unit there as well. So this is the area where I'm going to hopefully put it. I'm not sure if it's entirely necessary but if it's in and the electric area does get hot then it will keep it cool. As I said earlier you can connect two or three of these fans together working off one temperature gauge. Um, I think I might just use one for now, see if it's enough and I've always got this spare one just to add on and I could put it elsewhere in the cupboard just to help with the movement of air. I think it might be a bit of an overkill but I have heard these um, multi plus inverters if you're using them all the time do create a bit of heat. So I'm going to save this fan installation to another video. Um, I've got some other things to be getting on with to finish my electrics and I want to do the interior cab so that being um, maybe next week's video um, so that's what I will be installing these fans at a later date so also in the next video I'm going to install the rest of my 240 electrics my controllers for my electric bed and my heater uh, my additional sockets and my internal units and worktops thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one